kind of a robot would you build next? Where do you see a need? Medical field. Medical field. What would you have the robot do? Uh, surgery. Okay, surgery. You know, so, surgery. so what's the need here? Because we have surgeons. So what's the need for a robot in surgery? Uh, precise. Okay. Precise cuts. Hand Yeah. Or maybe the things that I'm working on are so small that I can't see them. Or maybe where I'm going inside of you, I can't see it. And if I can't see it, now I'm guessing. You don't want me guessing if I'm doing surgery. So there's one need. What's another need? What's something that you, there's a usually define a need. What's something that you don't want to that activity? Cleaning. Cleaning. Okay. What if we made a robot that cleaned for you? Say, hey, I need you to go clean your room. Got it. Hey, robot, I need you to go clean my room. <laughs> what else? Because we got a robot that does that. Cooking. Cooking. She said, where's my chef robot? Because she has all these things that she wants to learn how to do or do because she's passionate about it, but cooking ain't one of them. She doesn't want to do that. So now she got to spend all this money going out to all these restaurants and everything. She don't want to cook. Where's her robot that can cook things? You know, McDonald's is actually experimenting with a robot that can make a burger all by itself. It's got everything in front of it. It has these arms and it makes it. Anybody, how many of y'all have ever worked for, a, for some kind of a burger joint, like a McDonald's or a Burger King or something like that? I did. I work for Burger King. Mm -hmm. I make it faster anyway. But here's the reason I can make a sandwich faster than anybody. Because a lot of y'all don't realize is that there's a specific program to it. To make uh, a Whopper, it required exactly, uh, you had the bun, you put exactly one scrape of mayonnaise on there, you put one handful of lettuce on it, and you, as I go down, there's trays here. And so I have that. It's exactly four pickles, it's exactly two slices of tomato, you keep going down the line until you get to the end, and then you wrap it, and they even teach you a specific way to wrap it, and then you put it on the chute. Right the front, put it on the string, and do it again. Left and right was my whole job for about a year. And you got good at it, because I didn't have to think about it anymore. And so somebody had to start and say, how can we get a really simple way to do that? So if, there, if you have a, a program to do that, then you have a robot that can do it too. Anything that you can do and just keep doing over and over and over again, a robot can do it too. So the challenge we have to y'all is, are you going to identify a need and then come up with something that nobody's ever seen before? Because like you said, 20 years ago, and I was around 20 years ago, we didn't have any cell phones. I went to school, no cell phones. And it wasn't like, oh, I can't wait to invent a cell phone. I didn't know what one was. Somebody actually had to come around. Somebody actually had the, vi the vision to make and buy the first fax machine. Think about that. You go to the store and you're buying, how many of y'all know what a fax machine is? Okay, so if you're buying the first one, what are you doing with it? What are you sending the fax to? You got the first one. So you actually have to believe that this is going to catch on and eventually you're going to have somebody send it back to. Somebody had to have an email. Who am I going to send an email to? I got the first email address. Okay, I'll to somebody else gets an email address. So somebody has to think it up, to dream it up, and then come up with it, and then convince others that your dream is worth catching on to. So I'm going to show you one of the dreams we had is exploring other planets. We explored the moon, that was great, and we went to other planets. We said, we're going to go to Mars, we're going to go to Venus, we're going to go to Mercury, we're going to go to all these places, and we're going to learn about it. And so we came up with, this isn't even the first one, this is actually the latest one, this is Curiosity. We sent tiny little probes first, and then we said, well, well what about this, or well, what about that? So let's look at this, this rover here. These are all the places that we landed on Mars. Like I said, we've been there a few times. And every time we go there, we see something different. And the, different, the problem is, is if, you, if you're working on your car and you see a problem, you just fix it right then and there, right? Or at the worst, you go down the store, go buy a part, and then you fix it. But when you land something on Mars, you don't get to fix it right now. Now you've got to build something to go all the way over there. It takes like 12 minutes just to get there. It's that far away. So these are all the places we've been to. So when we send, it takes us two billion dollars, sometimes two and a half billion, depending on how complicated the robot is, to send it all the way to Mars. And you, so you have to decide, where do I want to send it? How many of y'all have ever been to an amusement park? Six Flags, Disney World, Disneyland, yeah, yeah. 
did you just kind of like walk in and just kind of go wherever the wind took you, or did you kind of like, all right, I'm gonna go to this place first, then I'm gonna go to this place, then I'm gonna get my fast pass and go on that ride? Did it, was it a planning process involved, or you were just kind of like, eh, we'll just see what happens? Sometimes it is. <coughs> my wife, it's see what happens. And she gets angry whenever I actually try to plan it. She's like, no, no, let's just go enjoy it. You're ruining it. But when we send something to Mars, we can't just say, see what happens. That's a two and a half million, or a billion dollar, let's just see what happens. So we pick places that we say, you know what, we're going to go to this place for this reason. Why do you think we picked the Gale Crater? To so see how wide it is. See how wide it is? Okay. There must have been an impact there from an outside asteroid. Okay. Maybe an impact. Different terrains in one area. Different terrains. So when I have different rock layers, how many of y'all are interested in geology? How many of y'all have ever seen the, the mountains out here and see how they look different in the bottom than they do from the top? Those mountains actually tell Earth's history. The higher up you go, the, the more rock samples you get from the bottom all the way to the top, you can actually tell what's happened on Earth all that way. So by picking the Gale Crater and having all those layers in one place, I get the best bang for my buck. I get to go to one place and learn almost the whole history of Mars. So if I want to learn the whole history of Mars, now I have to build a robot that even once it gets there, that can actually get me the information I need. So what do you want to know about Mars? Now you're a scientist. What do you want to know about Mars? It's a whole other place. What do you want to know? If there was life there. Was there life? Is there life now? We saw pictures one time and it looked like there was all these canals on it. And it scared us at first because we thought people built it. And so that's where we got the, the, the Martians idea. And we're like, oh, there, there's, there's aliens living on Mars. Because look at all these canals. And then finally, when we started getting robots there, we found out that these canals were actually just refractions on the camera. It wasn't even really there. So we had all these science, science fiction shows. And you could ask your parents or grandparents and anybody older than you, and they, they watch these shows, and they start out black and white, and they're like, the design is scarce. They're like, oh, there's Martians on there. They might invade Earth. And so now we really started getting into Mars. we got to make sure there actually are Martians over there. What else do you want to know? How long has it been there? Is it livable? Is it livable? If you land on Mars and get out of your spacesuit, what happens? You dead. I don't know. But we might want to know. Because you might want to know if it's okay to take that helmet off. So here's one thing we've learned about Mars. Mars actually looks a lot like what Earth used to look like. And so the question is, is well, Mars doesn't seem to support life now. So what happened to Mars that might happen to us? And so a lot of times we can look at other planets that aren't like us, and if they have hints of what we, we, we might look like in the future, then we need to know that. Because if we can figure out what happened on Mars, because we suspect that once upon a time there was life on Mars, but now there's not. Or at least we don't think there is. So what happened? Because whatever happened there could happen to us. And if we can figure it out before it happens, we might be able to prevent it. So we have to be able to figure that out. So what kind of sensors do you think you need? First off, what's a sensor? You have sensors on your body. What sensors do you have on your own body? Touch. Touch. So I've got skin, nerve endings on the skin. So when I put my hand on something, I can get information about it. Sight. Sight. I look around. I can see how many people in here. I can see if somebody's going to step up on me. I can see a lot of things. Colors, shapes. What else? Ears. Okay. Now that's a few. There you go. So what kind of things do you think a robot needs to have? If you want to know stuff about Mars, that robot's got to have sensors so it can give you information. So what kind of what kind of sensors do you think a robot needs to have? <coughs> sight. How would you use, what kind of sensor would you use for sight? Camera. A camera? Okay. So now you got a robot and you put a camera on it. Okay. What else do you want on it? A sense. sense of direction. A sense of direction. Mars doesn't have the same magnetic field as we do. So how do you find direction on Earth? Compass. A compass. So your cell phone has a compass on it. Most of the modern ones have a version of a compass on it. So you can actually look around. If you pulled out your cell phone on Mars, it would spin. 
Mars doesn't have the magnetic field we do. It has a very weak magnetic field. And so your phone wouldn't know which way was north. So now you have to come with a completely new way of navigating. You can't just go north. There is no north. So you're right, a way of direction. So we can come up with different ways of that, and somebody has to come up with it. So you first you have to do is figure out, well, how am I going to know which way is which? Let's look at some of the sensors they came up with. So first, they had to look at weight. So the first, one of the first Mars rovers we made, they were light. The instruments were only 11 pounds. You could pick them up yourself. The robot, 384 pounds. You and a couple buddies could probably pick it up. The rover we have right now that's been there for the last three years, Curiosity, is it weighs about as much as your car. And it might be difficult to pick up those instruments depending on how strong you are. So it has a whole bunch of sensors on it. This is what it looked like when they were building it. So they have 17 cameras on it. One camera is devoted just to taking selfies. Got to take selfies. <laughs> They got laser zap rocks. How many of y'all ever did the thing where maybe you're on a camping trip or something, or maybe you just did it in a science class and they threw something in a fire and it changed the color of the fire? Maybe you see on TV. Mm -hmm. So you can see that color change, and it'll, if you know what happens, let's say when I throw mercury in there, that it changes red. So if you do see it change red, then you know what? I threw mercury in there. So that laser will zap a rock, and then based on what the color change is when it zaps it, it can tell what that rock was made out of. Why would it be important to know what, what stuff is made out of on Mars? See if it can relate to Earth. See if it can relate to Earth, absolutely. You wanted to know if there was life on Mars. One way you can tell if there's life on Earth, checking for carbon. All life on Earth has some kind of carbon in it. So if you find a whole bunch of carbon on Mars, what, that might, what, what might that tell you? There is life, or there was life, or some kind of life you don't understand yet. There's one, two of the cameras right there. That top one there, the big looking circle one with all the bolts on it, above the square, that's the laser. That big giant block, that's just laser. There's an artist representation that shoots a rock. And just like you have sensors on your hand, you have lots of sensors on your hand. You have nerves all over the place that tell you different things. You can do stuff with your hand. Depending on how hard, let's say you were trying to, you can crush a Coke can, and that would tell you something about the Coke can, right? As compared if you grabbed a dumbbell and tried to squeeze a dumbbell. You wouldn't be able to crush that, but that would tell you something about the dumbbell. So what, the majority of the sensors on Curiosity are actually on that hand. It spends most of its time actually just trying to interact with the dirt in front of it. There's some of the sensors on it right there. We are more interested in the rocks on Mars than anything. There's a bigger picture there. So how do you recharge a battery if you don't have a plug-in? Solar. solar. You could use solar. Wind. What if, it, what if you found yourself in a place where it was dark all the time? fell in a hole. Extra batteries. So you have batteries and they last so long. Your phone has batteries. They'll last so long depending on the model of phone you have, how long your batteries is. So we came up with a new way to charge batteries. We actually put radioactive material on the, the rover and as that radioactive material decays, it releases heat. Just like you can heat a steam turbine by heating it up and making it spin. So the heat off of that plutonium as it, as it decays recharges the battery. So the battery is constantly being run down and recharged at the same time. The other way we make this work is we make it use as little wattage as possible. That robot uses about as much power as this light bulb does. The whole robot, all instruments, laser, motors, everything on it. So all 17 cameras use about as much power as a 100 watt light bulb right there. So how do we talk? We actually have a cell phone network in space. If you connected your cell phone to it, you could actually talk to Earth with a cell phone from Mars. The problem is, is you might not like the conversation because it would go like this, hey, what's up? And then you would wait 12 minutes 
and then they would hear, hey, what's up? And they would say, oh, not much, you? 12 minutes later. So 24 minutes later, you would get, not much, how's you doing? <laughs> so you'd have to be really careful about what you said. And I've actually you know, mentioned that I was in the Army. I served three tours in Iraq, and we run into this issue just still on Earth because I have to use a satellite phone if I want to talk to my family. And it's not 12 minutes worth, but it might be about nine seconds worth sometimes. And trust me, it gets annoying really fast, having to wait 18 seconds for somebody you love to say, what's up back? And so you may be talking and not realize that they're actually trying to talk back to you, and now signals are getting crossed, and you're having to wait until somebody shuts up. Same thing that happened with this, only now it's 12 minutes instead of nine seconds. So if your robot just somehow crashed into something or got messed up, you wouldn't know for about 12 minutes until it happened. So we have satellites, just like we have satellites over Earth, we have satellites over Mars. They're still chilling, they're circling around, sending messages. Depending on how they are in the orbits, so you can see if you're on the closest side of the blue circle to Mars, and Mars is just, if it stays put where it's at, then that's about five minutes. But the way it's set up right now, where they're as far apart as possible, now it's 20 minutes. These are things you have to worry about in case we ever do build a, uh, build a home on Mars or some kind of settlement on Mars. How many of y'all would like to actually go live on another planet? Maybe not, okay. But if you did live on another planet, cell phone calls would be really weird. So curiosity decides what it's gonna do. It doesn't, I mean, it does follow directions, but we also have an onboard computer system where it can make decisions. Because what if we lose contact? And it runs into a dangerous situation. You don't have 12 minutes to figure out what to tell it. <clears throat> and so the robot actually has to make its own decisions. So curiosity, she may take pictures one day, shoot a laser at a rock, drill, or just drive. And we can send general instructions, but she's actually programmed to make some of her decisions herself. The cool part is she was designed so well that her mission was only supposed to be one Martian here, which is about two Earth years, but she's actually still roaming. She's been in service for three years, and so every two years we apply for another extension just to let her go another two years, and we keep getting them. We'll keep doing it until that plutonium runs out or something happens, but we'll keep that robot going. So I want to show you something, and I want you to try something out. I want you to see if you can pilot your own rover. So you'll see I have a box here, and then one of the other things I want to show you is that my robots have actually been watching you the whole time. So I have three robots over here. One of them has been running its camera the whole time watching you, tracking what people have been doing. So if you fall asleep, she knows. Okay. So, you want to know what it's like trying to operate a rover on Mars, I'm going to give you the opportunity. Now you don't get to see Mars, unless you want to go ahead and go over there. So you have to depend on what the robot shows you. Now, let's say, let's say you ever had that, you had to go outside, but you didn't have shoes available, and so you had to kind of walk outside with no shoes on, where do you look? Down. Down. Why? So you, you don't, don't want to step, step on anything that You're might hurt you. Scared of what you might step on. Oh man, I almost up there. That might hurt. And so you kind of walk all gingerly on the on the street or on the on the grass or rocks, whatever you have. So my robot does the same thing. Because I'm not too worried about what's off in the distance. It's the stuff right up on me that might hurt my robot. And if my robot breaks, I don't get to fix it. I have to spend another two and a half billion dollars to send another robot up there. So, and then you also notice I'm subject to interference as well. So sometimes I might have to deal with imperfect pictures. There's a lot going on there. So, who has a cell phone? Who wants to pilot this? Because you can pilot it with your cell phone. So anybody who can, you can go on to either the Apple Store or the Android Store. It's a really low uh, program called NXT. Just go ahead and do a search for NXT and download it. Anybody who wants to pilot this thing? Mm -hmm.
Let me know when somebody's found it. It's called NXT. I use Android. But it's called NXT. NXT remote control. Got the camera went out. Okay. Well, I just figured somebody wants to control it. So, you want to do it? Did you already install it? Okay, come on up. See in mission control there? Go ahead and move around a little bit. NXT robots are controlled by Bluetooth. Imagine what happens in mission control. too much down here because I want you to be able to build a robot. So will get stuck sometimes and then we'll actually have to move around and try to figure out what's happening and this is the view you get 
Now there's 17 cameras on that rover, so you can switch to a different camera. I have one on here, because so I want her to save most of my cameras for you. So, thank you so much. So, I will have this up here if you want to give this a shot. I'll keep my phone on me. But what I want you to do is I want you to have the opportunity to put something together yourself. So what you have here is you have these Coke can cars. They look like this. The antennas are very delicate. I already broke one. But these ones, they work. They have that. And then inside of these, these are those little super secret spy cameras you have. So if you look up there, you might see that I have actually one of these on top of that projector that's plugged into it. And then this is your camera. It's that big. And then I give it new batteries, electrical tape. Here's a little, this is just a baby screwdriver that you can turn, one size Phillips, one size standard and I'm not really going to tell you a whole lot more I want you to go ahead and build something to take home with you so come on up occupy a spot and have fun Real chef will be the electronics. Mm -hmm. I guess this is what it is. Yeah. 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 Kind of overbooked on this one. Oh, you still got it. Uh, you might have to use like some keys or a tool over there. Alright. I think one of us should have gotten one. So we could have worked just downtown. I don't think actually have to so each one of the battery packs has four batteries in it, you only need two. So you guys can share one battery pack with two people. There you go, please.
Hey, this works. Yeah. Um, this is it is good. We both want to be more I got a car but didn't get a camera. Me? Hey. Car, no camera? Oh, okay. I didn't even press anything. It did just be gone. Yeah, bro. What the freak, bro? You get away from everything. See, this car not working. No one's there. All these radio signals are playing. I thought I'd actually take a picture of just, just in Marco and Brian never followed me back. Dude, yeah, Marco never followed me back. I think I should just... I think I should just unfollow... Actually, no, wait, he just hit me up, that's right. Who didn't follow me back? It was Alex this Lake, she hasn't got me back yet. Colton just got me back. Model girlfriend, whenever. Just didn't really go. No, she definitely remembers me. I was over uh, before high school. It was eighth summer after eighth grade. I saw her last. Yeah. Yeah. Of course he destroyed your channel. Is that even a question? Here's the first one that was in there that is. Yeah, Ryan destroyed your world. No, it's okay. It's okay. It's okay. Yeah. I want more of your face. Let's go. You know, I just realized this thing's on the internal cam. I mean, internal mic. Go on, literally. <laughs> See, right? You teach me the way of internal settings. I just don't think you know. Oh, look. That's the message. James Jennings. 1999 through 2016. You can just see that, right? May he rest. Dude, did you ever see the Cole tribute? <laughs> no. Did Matt ever finish the Cole tribute? This is my favorite song. You guys all look so different. You should upload it. I remember this picture. This is fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. Wait, no. The range in the, this is not that far, but you can take this onto something else if you have a better RC car at home that has a longer range, and you can drive it. The range on these are actually pretty good. It's the car that doesn't have that good of a range. 
just like this is dating profile pic. The same thing that you have. Is that Musashi? Yeah. This is a dating profile pic. Camera actually has a I like this whole what did you just do kind of look. So if I drove that outside, I would still get a picture, still get a picture. You're dead now. Eventually, I wouldn't be able to control the car anymore. But I'd still get a picture. This is beautiful. Senior picture. You only need to take your senior picture. Yo, I'll set up the whole modeling stuff, too. Thank you. Can we just take a senior picture right now? Just take a senior picture. Oh, all right. Yeah, let's do it. We gotta take it outside. Let's go outside. Oh, no, no. Yeah, let's do it. No, I'm a big hater of random foliage in the background. Senior foliage. Have you noticed almost every background in senior picture is some sort of wilderness, some sort of tree? Uh, that way you take it in like the industrial area. Like, yeah, I, I really like my brother's. He's up against like a brick wall, like a, like some metal like sheets. It's like a real nice contrast with like white tree. It looks really good. Man. Like, can I take mine in front of like a Ferrari, dude? That'd be good. On your swagway? <laughs> dude, you think Candy would be cool if we used the swagway for Chronicler? Or other projects? Dude, imagine the smooth pans with that thing. Exactly. Hold it still, oh, go in cool. circles. Yeah. Okay. I'm like, so excited. I don't know, Katie's. Like, is that yours? Please be his. Dude, like if Katie, if that was Katie's, that'd be great. Like if she was, I don't know if she'd be cool with us using that, but. No, like no, she's like really cool about people using other cool. She's cool. Oh yeah, this was. Or or we we hired his bush. I got it's me outside. Yeah. Dude, let's wait for let's wait until bushes for Brandon to spugway on by. We'll just tackle them. Out. This was awful. No, you You can see the progression of the design back there. Oh, yeah, there's this one where I got crushed. Oh yeah, original nature group. Dude, OG nature and groovy coast? You want to see this? Yes. You've already made a first post. Do a throwback. <laughs> Just immediately after. I didn't have a couple of fire ones in between. What, what are you so. turning with that? Like, Jim, I really like that one. I don't think you ever posted it, though, where we're all at Ryan's and Ryan was coming at the camera with his camera on his little... Wait, what? Oh, I had the wig on? Yeah, you had the wig on. I really like that one. Which one is that? I'm at your house when we're filming Nature Ruby too. You're on the little ripstick coming out of Jimmy with the wig on. Oh, that's, that was a picture? Yeah, oh, that's right. Yeah, we did that. Dude, it would be really cool for us. Uh, yeah, that's what I was thinking, because you could stand still and have really smooth kind of pans as the camera would move in place. Yeah, and uh, Rohan, I've been thinking about how I want to, uh, I'm thinking about scene progression. I got a really cool layout for you guys. I don't know about you, sometimes too. I think rather than a girl, <laughs> then, uh, it'd be TJ. And TJ could be like the one that the guy kills in the end of the hour. The TJ could show some sort of firepower. And it'll be like having a webcam conversation with me. And the guy comes in. He's like, What are you? I am the solution. No, it needs to be you. Or a dude when Tarlock comes up, he starts blood beating in the mines. Go kind of like and try to stop it. Bring it through. See, like, because I have. Yeah, we can have a scene like that, but like, so far the progression is really cool. Because, like, that's where you see it. I am the It's like, I am the just the coolest scene ever. Like, mustache guy collapses, all the, like, cheap and collapses. The mod stops. The next one, she has the better of him. He just keeps walking. He's like, there you go. also audio. I just don't have the audio plugged in because I didn't want everybody's voice to be played on the board. Unless that's the key. Oh, my God. 
Oh, no cameras unless you have somebody to see. Unfortunately, this class was originally supplied for 20 people. There's a lot more 20 people. Yeah, this is a firebreaker. Isaac, Isaac has really <laughs> slimmed up a bit. Isaac? No, Isaac only. No, that's just making it hard. Well, his face is circular. He'll say that's way too thin. But just stress. No, but yeah, I definitely want to get a squad pick because I like this outfit I'm in. I like it a lot. I wore this to homecoming, so... I wore this to the FBI, not to the FBI, the uh, Orlando dance. Okay, come on. That was fun. It was a good time. Hey, come on. Yeah, yeah, it was a good time. Camille made me dance with her and I got sucked into the middle of like the masses of people. I'm like, <laughs> everybody was taller than me, like everybody's sweaty. I kept getting like pushed into the middle. Which was so small for like a million kids that way. No, the thing is they all condensed into one half of the room. So just really compact mosh pits. I feel like they can pass. It's like it's a freaking sports zone. Can we change it somewhere else? Yeah, that's what I was thinking. I don't want to be the Nothing's gonna happen. What if someone bumps into the knock it over? Nobody to get mad at. But yourself. Who are you mad at, Zuko? I know you're gonna be so Your aura still feels pasty and gray. My own mother thought I was a monster. This is right, of course. This is not kind of hurt. I just I love that line like, hey Chad, that outfit's so sharp. You may want to be careful because you can pierce the hole of an Imperial class fire navy ship. <laughs> you know, because it's so sharp. <laughs> was that from last year? Yeah. Like that was an actual line. Yeah. <laughs> they somehow managed to come up with it. Airbender always has really unique names, but they somehow managed to come up with the sort of douche names of Airbender, Chan and Ron. Put that on you. What do you have there? I'm Chan, he's a shot. My favorite is the Zero. looks so good. <laughs> I'm about to celebrate becoming an only child. Hey, Mom, you want to see how Azula feeds the turtle dogs? Chuck's a loaf of bread at the thing. Oh my god. This was sixth grade. That's it. That was the other thing. Sixth or There's no way that's eight. Okay, no. I got a gold medal. So it's seventh grade. Where's Gavin? You had like long, yeah, long, 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 long flippy beaver. Do you remember you wear, that? Yeah, he wear his Joker shirt that's yeah. always so serious. Yeah, guys, it is. And then it was, it was your book picture is just him going like this, but there's a slight little smirk to it. It's really Look at Mark. <laughs> oh, goodness. Did you did so 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 go on a photo shoot? Actually, I do need to check one out because. Chance. <laughs> Modeling adventure? Hey, we have about 15 minutes left. About 15 minutes left, so I would encourage. Yep. Yep, what's up? We'll need to borrow each other's jackets and switch them around so it doesn't look like we did it all in one day. No, I'm not. Hey, Matt, I want to take us. I'm going to watch Black And then we'll be like. Matt, I know you just took us home, but you can come by again and we'll okay. go take pictures so of ourselves and not you. The little kind of keychain screwdrivers, those stick around. Yeah. And that the camera sticks around. Like, oh, <laughs> no pun intended. But uh, as far as the cameras and the cars themselves, those are y'all. So, like, 
power cords here. Those are usually necessary. So we'll be going behind. Okay.